What's up guys, it's Weston here. So today I'm going to be reviewing a Samsung 950 Pro M2 NVMe drive, but I'm also going to be comparing it against an SSD later on in the video. But anyway, let's just take a look at this M2 drive first and see what it's all about. So the exact model I'm reviewing today is the 958 Pro 256 gig variant. However, you can get the newer 960 model for £130 on Amazon. They also do a 500 gig and a 1 terabyte, but obviously they will cost more. Now the model I have, the 950 Pro, will set you back £220 on Amazon, but you may find it cheaper if you look around. So looking at the drive, I am liking it. It's a clean black design and it'll definitely definitely fit in with more builds as now motherboards are mostly opting to use a full black PCB. Installing the drive is super easy, all that you have to do is locate the M.2 slot and remove the screw holding it in place. Now if you're using an MSI Z220 Carbon like I am, you've got an option to install it in one of two M.2 slots. Now I decided to opt for the one at the bottom with the heat shield, so again this is simply done by removing the heat shield, again that's done by unscrewing it. You can then opt to reinstall the heat shield, but I opted not to. Next up, you simply line up the M2 with a slot, ensuring the Samsung logo is facing down. However, your motherboard may be different, so check before you attempt to install it. Then once you've placed it in, simply gently hold it in place and re-screw it in. Make sure that it's not too tight though as you don't want to damage it or the motherboard, and that is pretty much it. So now we've got it installed, let's have a look at it in the system, and it fits lovely with my uh, motherboard, and it looks pretty great with a clean black colour scheme. My only issue is that on my motherboard, I'd rather have been looking at the Samsung logo rather than all the information, but once you've got a GP you in it you can't really notice but again this may be different depending on what motherboard you have and now let's talk about data and crystal disk mark gave us an impressive score of 2263 megabytes per second read and 961.7 megabyte per second write which is epically impressive so now we've got that segment of the review out of the way let's talk about the comparison against the ssd and see how it does in some more real world scenarios versus that ssd so the ssd i'm comparing it to is a kingston hyper x 120 gig ssd and it is the 3k version and i'll put some more information about it in the description i've also got a 240 gig ssd which i'm going to be testing it with and also a hard drive which is 5400 rpm and that's going to sort of simulate some backup tests so anyway now let's get into the comparisons and show you all the results and first up it's a synthetic crystal dismount test. Here you can see the M2 blows the SSD out of the water and delivers an impressive read and write speed. The SSD does well too giving us a read speed of 458. 2.8 and a write speed of 184.2 so both are really impressive but the m2 even more so now let's look at some more real world stuff though so the first real world test is a 10 gig file transfer to a 5400 rpm hard drive now this simulates a file backup now the 10 gig folder consists of documents, music, videos, photos, programming store files and pretty much everything you'd find in an everyday folder. So this will just give you a rough idea of how long a data backup will take. And we can see from the results that both managed to do this in an impressive 2 minutes and 2 seconds. So this tells me that the 5400 RPM drive is bottlenecking both the M2 and the SSD as they both achieved exactly the same time. So basically the 5400 RPM had reached its limit. Next up we test the write speed to a 240 gig SSD and again both did really impressive. So the M.2 did the same 10 gig folder as previous in 43 seconds and gave us an average speed of 230 meg per second. The SSD on the other hand was still epically quick at 57 seconds and managed 170 meg per second. Now we get onto some 1080p video rendering. And here we're rendering a 5 minute video to the 240 gig SSD. And quite surprisingly both managed this task in 2 minutes 9 seconds. Again suggesting there may be some bottleneck in the system. It's only when we do 4K footage that there is a slight difference. The M2 did a 5 minute 4K video in 7 minute 14 seconds. And the SSD did the same in 7 minutes 43. It's so not exactly a massive difference but there is a slight improvement. So now let's talk price to performance and we'll start with price to storage first and it's no surprise the SSD wins this. The M2 give us a 98 pence per gigabyte and the SSD is 31 pence per gigabyte so obviously in cost per gigabyte the SSD reigns supreme. 
However, if you look at the new 960 model, which costs £130, you can see that that brings this down to 50 per gig, but the SSD is still the winner. However, this does close the gap. Finally, let's talk price to speed, and here the M2 takes the win. Now, these results are based on the Crystal Dismount results as the file transfers didn't provide solid speeds due to system bottlenecks. So the M2 gives us an impressive 11 pens per megabyte per second for write and 16 pens per megabyte per second per read. The SSD still scored well, giving us 16 pens per megabyte per second on write and 40 pens per megabyte per second for read. So both actually represent really great value for money based on the synthetic benchmark scores. Right guys, so now that's pretty much everything. Let's just wrap this up. So are M2 drives worth it? So as you can see from the results in my system, the M2 wasn't really giving me much benefit. And that is because the rest of my hard drives were bottlenecking the M2 and obviously reducing its ability to perform properly. Now, depending on what drives you've got in your system, so if you've got really fast modern drives, then your results were probably different to the ones I've got. My results are just based on the system I have with the 5400 RPM hard drive and the solid state drive. So pretty much my M2 was being bottlenecked by the rest of my system. Now, if you're just working on an M2 drive like I do usually, usually I render from and render to the M2 drive, then that is going to give you much better performance. However, that does have its own little drawbacks as the size in of my drive, the 256 gig, is limited, which means I can only work on a certain amount of projects at once so depending on like I said what storage configuration you've got then the results that you get are going to be different to mine this is just to give you a rough idea of sort of a general PC build with a mechanical drive and an SSD but anyway depending on your configuration your results are probably going to be much different to the ones I got so are the M2 drives worth it well I would say yes they are depending on if you've got a system that can actually keep up with the M2 drive and allow it to perform to its full potential. And there you have it guys, that is pretty much it for this one. Sorry about my voice, I've just got a bit of a sore throat. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. I've got another PC build coming very soon. I've got some motherboard reviews, graphics cards coming, and all my other consumer stuff too. So if you want to see that, then hit that subscribe button. Also, if you enjoyed the video, a like would be greatly appreciated too. It goes a long way to help out and just let me know if you enjoyed the video. So that is it guys, thank you again and I will see you all on the very next one.